one of the great luxuries that a franchise like Terminator allows you is you can simply just cast the best actor for the role. So we have a massive international cast. Kyle Reese and John Connor are both from Australia. You know, Sarah's from the UK. Dio's actually from Africa. J.K. Simmons will walk around saying he's the lone American in the movie. And action! If one of those guys happened to be American, they still would have gotten the job, but it just wasn't who the uh, best person for the role was. In, in the whole cast has been easy. It's, a, you know, we all get on, you know, and, and a lot of that is, you know, back to Arnold. We've got a guy there that, you know, we're all here because of. Terminator worked largely because of Jim Cameron and, and his story, and, but Arnold was just like, it was just brilliant casting. You can't do a Terminator without Arnold. You, do, you just can't. He is, he's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of all of the movies. There's that poster of him with a gun, you know, and to me, it's so iconic. And he became such an icon in the part. So, you know, I think we're very lucky to have him uh, as part of our story. The first time I met Arnold, we were doing a, a table read with uh, most of the uh, the cast and uh, you know, all the producers, you know, the big giant square table. And we're chatting and getting to know each other. Arnold came in and sat down. And obviously, he's a big guy physically, but he walks into a room and he just brings a, a presence and a charisma with him that's undeniable. Lord. But not obsolete. It was pretty special for me at the table read when we were hearing the script out loud for the first time, and uh, he said some very famous words. I'll be back. That was one of those moments where it was just like, shit, yep, there it is. <laughs> there they are. Perhaps three of the most, you know, iconic words in cinematic history. I mean, I had to get him the other day to do Shadow Connor. You know, because you know, just the way he does it, it's just so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm back. <laughs> to me, Terminator has been an extremely important franchise uh, because I remember when I did the first Terminator, um, it was really the first action movie where I didn't have to take off my clothes. I mean, I did take it off just for a few minutes, but the rest of the movie was with clothes. It was like with my leather pants on or jeans or leather jacket and t-shirt and all this. And the body was not the most important thing because the machine actually was the most important thing. So to me, this was an important breakthrough in my career because everyone thought that I can only do Hercules movies or to do a Conan type of movies, you know, where you need a little lion cloth and uh, flex your muscles and that was it. Uh, so here was the first uh, movie where I, you know, kind of did the movie all the way through with clothes on and where it was acting and where I was not only playing a, a hero like I did in the past, but I played a villain. But the villain that was kind of heroic, so it was kind of a mishmash of different things. It was really terrific and a great breakthrough for my career. After that came Commando and Red Heat and a Predator and True Lies and all of those kind of things. The rest, of course, is history. One of the first people we cast, I mean, besides Arnold, was Amelia as Sarah. And the nice thing for me was I had a history with her in Game of Thrones. When I came to the project, Sky Dance was already very excited about her in the role. Look, everybody um, in our world is a Game of Thrones fan. <laughs> so saying, um, hey, what about Amelia Clark? It wasn't much of a stretch. And action. I mean, look, it's obvious. She's beautiful, but she's also a badass. And that's a, an interesting but also difficult combination to find in an actress. How is he? Still breathing. Good. And you should be able to mate with Kyle Reese in this timeline. Oh, OK, we're not having this conversation again. We had to run a uh, casting process, as you always do, and it was really, really simple. She came in and read, and everybody looked at it and was like, that's, that's it, that's Sarah. Her dedication to this role, the emotional depths, the charm, the humor, but also just the incredible strength it makes her a very different Sarah Connor than we've seen, but she's absolutely fantastic in this movie. My brother made me watch, I say made, made me watch Terminator far too young. I just kind of fell in love with it, and it was always something that I wasn't meant to watch, so this, there was this kind of excitement surrounding it. Like, you're not going to say no to Sarah Connor. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're just, you're just not. She's such an incredible icon for women everywhere, and just an opportunity to play such a fierce, strong warrior and put a new spin on it like we have it was just incredible and incredibly exciting. I didn't know she's that 
famous when I first met her, but a lot of my Korean friends text me from Korea, please take some picture with her. So I didn't ask her yet, but um, today I finally asked her and she said, yeah. <laughs> And then we set about trying to find Kyle Reese, and, and chemistry was a huge part of it. I think there was a temptation to go out and find a, a Michael Bean and say, let's do that again. Action. Because it was like Linda Hamilton, he so nailed you know, what he had to do in the first movie. But after a while, as you work on the material, you, you know, this is a different take on the character. We're exploring different things. And we then just set out to find the best guy for the role. I had the privilege of uh, working with Jai a couple years ago on uh, Jack Reacher, which is a movie we did with Tom Cruise, where he played a very different character. He played the villain of the film. This is insane. All of it, this is not the mission. Yeah, well, that's we really actually ran a completely open casting process. Jai came in and we actually question a little bit, does he have the range to play such a drastically different character? And he came in and tested with Amelia, and I remember me and Dana and Alan, we all looked at ourselves and went, that's Kyle. Just he was simply the best actor for the job. You die, all right? What? You die, that's what happens. I went back and watched the first two films, definitely more of just for a reference point, but I didn't place an enormous amount of emphasis on trying to draw from the performance of you know, Michael Bain or anything like that. It was just, you know, he's the character, that's great, let's enjoy the narrative. Sarah. It's just fun to kind of look back and think of what the mission was when we saw it once upon a time. And so with shifting that, it's interesting to kind of just play a, you know, a different side of it. The main reason I decided to do this movie was because my 12-year-old daughter is in love with Jai Courtney. And I said, okay, I'll go work with him. You can come to the set if you want. I did a little, uh, a little birthday video for her 13th birthday saying hi to her. So she will be, that's next week that I will get to play that for her. I will be Mr. Super Dad. Yeah, that'll be, that'll be big. We fight for those that have died. We fight for those who will die tonight. John Connor, we knew, was going to be one of the hardest roles to cast because he has to be charismatic. He has to be a guy who people who have no hope look at, and he is their hope. You know, not literally, but figuratively, he is their messiah. Jason Clark plays our John Connor, and it's a character that's been deeply embedded in mythology from all the movies, but in our film, he has to make you fall in love with him in very short order, and then he has to scare the pants off you, and he was able to do both of those. And I'd just seen him in Planet of the Apes, but the film that made us all fall in love with him was probably Zero Dark Thirty, and we were very lucky to get him. Jason Clark is just one of those brilliant actors who can play simply any range. We don't know what's gonna happen next. There's a big reveal scene in the parking structure, and Arnold actually came up to me at the end of the day and was like, David, Jason's really good. <laughs> and I was like, yes, I know he is. I do not have sufficient data to answer the question. Yeah, that's the problem with machines, no imagination. I mean, Jason was just so powerful with his speeches, so lofty, so strong inside. He never felt kind of intimidated by the Terminator or anything else, no matter what the challenges were. So I, I just thought he was terrific. It's a very enigmatic but captured guy, you know, a man who's a messiah and, a, you know, has a future to fulfill to, to save the world, but then he's trapped in that destiny and in that world that he's been born into. And, and then you still didn't really know that much about him, about how he, you know, how he truly felt about everything that was going underneath. And I think that was a big key point for the writers and for David in figuring out why they wanted to do this and, and what was going to be, you know, within the heart of it. And, I, you know, and I think John lies at the heart of it about, you know, the man and machine. I feel like I'm just making a movie with a bunch of friends because we got to work with Bai Young Lee on, uh, on G.I. Joe. When you think about Robert Patrick's performance, there was just something, it was a walking nightmare constantly coming at you. And this, the specifics of his physicality and w the way he moves, the way he attacks, it, it's literally a nightmare that's never stopping. It looks easy on the surface because you're not talking that much, and it's really difficult because you have to move in a way that is specific but yet different and creepy and scary all at the same time. 
And you also have to have a physicality. You have to have a real physicality for the role. And he, we knew from G.I. Joe that he had that in spades. I literally remember thinking, well, it's only a couple of weeks. I have no idea if he'll want to do it. And we called him, and it turned out that it was actually one of the franchises that he loved and was kind of like the ultimate dream for him to be in Terminator. And so at the end, he's like, I would have done it for nothing. I just wanted to be in this movie. This movie influenced me a lot since I was a teenager. When I was in high school, my friends called me Terminator as a nickname, because they thought I looked like him. And also, I was the champion of arm wrestling. So they call me uh, Terminator. So it's kind of a coincidence to uh, get uh, participate in this project. So it was really uh, great. Primates evolve over millions of years. I evolve in seconds, and I I'm here. I'm a huge Doctor Who fan, and Matt, as an actor, had all the qualities that we were really looking for. Literally, we wanted somebody who has a quality to him that actually feels slightly inhuman. Because, you know, what he is playing is the personification of Skynet. He is 100% machine, but also an incredibly complicated artificial intelligence. And we chased Matt Smith down. I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I'd love to say, like, we asked him and he was like, sure, I'm gonna do it. No, we hunted him down to make him be in this movie. It actually took a lot of conversations, as he will actually tell you. It was his mother who eventually said, you're an idiot if you don't do this, that actually got him to say yes, uh, after he had said no about three times, and despite in passion emails, and I promise you, you'll be happy you did this. And action. I think one of the funniest days on this set was the day it was announced that Matt Smith was going to be in this movie because he coincidentally was here uh, doing hair and makeup and it felt like the internet went crazy. And now having spent some time with Matt Smith, I can understand why. One of the great draws for me really was, was, was A, to play someone that was villainous because if I look at my career, that's that's been something that, that I've always wanted to do. And, and um, you know, to get to do it in a franchise like this, I'm 31 now. Sort of growing up in the 80s, I think for anyone who's about my age, the first two movies were seminal films, really. And I think they were just really ahead of their time. Oh, yeah. Did you see it? Did you? Hey, hey look, I, I got some uh, frame grabs from the overpass. See? It... JK, I'd worked with a million years ago in Oz when he was a white supremacist. And he's just a joy. JK is, it's lucky and wonderful for us to be able to watch him win an Academy Award while we're finishing the movie. Um, but it just confirms what we are already knew. You remember me? I was younger, more hair, less. We like to feel that, that um, we spotted early what the rest of the world caught on to, um, which is the sort of stunning combination of the ability to be very light and comic and also to have a lot of depth and understanding and to have a kind of a performance. I mean, Whiplash is one of my favorite movies of last year. It's an incredible film. Goddamn time traveling robots covering up their goddamn tracks. Knew it. I honestly, you know, was not looking to do this kind of movie right now, but, you know, there, there was an inquiry, and I said, let me see the script, and I read the script, and I thought, this is really great. And then I saw, you know, all the people that were involved, and the Arnold was back, and the way they deal with Arnold being however much older he is than, than he was in the first one, and the new actors that they've brought in, and the script, it was just a, a slam dunk, so I, I jumped on board. I know what's going on here has to be really, really complicated. We're here to stop the end of the world. I can work with that. Some of the best lines are lines that JK wrote on set himself. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Some yeah. of that, some of the best stuff, the door line. Yeah. That's the new breacher. Big blast, no shrapnel. Blows the door clean off. You know, for people who can't do that themselves. JK got the character. He understood how much fun the character could be, what it, what the role was, why he was there, how important he was in the story. He yeah. immediately understood that the the both the weight and the and the lightness that the character could provide and lent into it in the best way. 
we were so, so lucky. Yeah. Uh, we know we were thrilled to have him in the movie. Yeah. Actors have egos. We all do, you know. But this team, everybody's here wanting to make the best movie they can and, and contribute to it. And, uh, and Arnold is, you know, the most gregarious, fun guy to just hang out with on the set, you know. And then they call action and boom. He's the guardian, and he knocks it out of the park. And, uh, and then you, you know, hang out and you know, have a good time. And it's been a very relaxed, fun atmosphere.